Welcome everybody, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. Thank you. So this is an annual gathering. I was told not to call it a tradition because then the expectation would be that it becomes a tradition, but I guess I just did. So it will be a tradition from now on. Think of it as pregame maybe for the fall fair. Uh, the fall fair is very fast. It's a wonderful homecoming. It's very busy, but we really don't have a chance to have a more intimate gathering like this one to reconnect uh, with people that we may not have seen for a long time and that we care a lot about. Actually, I'm really delighted to see so many alumni in the room, and I'm going to put them on the spot a little bit and just ask them to introduce themselves, maybe their name, their year of graduation, and their team color, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, actually, Kate, why don't you start? And we're going to go around this way. Yeah. Can you turn around? So that yes. can see. I'm Kate. I graduated in class of 2020, and I'm on blue. <laughs> <laughs> Mario, go ahead. We're going to go. Hi everyone, my name is Mario. I graduated in 2020 and I am proudly a member of the red team. Aaron, <laughs> My name is Aaron. Um, I graduated in 2023 and I'm a member of the blue team. Yes, I am Elias Roman, class of 1998, I'm a proud member of the red team. Sarah? Uh, Sarah Roman, um, class of 98 also, and also on the red team. Thank goodness. <laughs> I don't think it was planned that way originally, but um, I guess uh, Fake did a good thing. So, all right, Nick, oh, no, not yet, Nick. Uh, all right, I'm just going around here. Yes. David Ehrlich, class of 60, and my father was school doctor. Oh, wow. I was uh, a blue. Uh, my politics are similar. <laughs> exciting moment. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the genesis of um, this project, but also to thank, even though they're not here, uh, Nash Shop class of 61 and his wife Annika, they underwrote this whole project, so they made uh, the publication of this book that you will see in a minute possible, and so I just wanted to thank them. Well, no, they're not here, but let's still <laughs> They visited recently, right? They live in D.C. Yes, they did, and they're in California with their family this okay. weekend. Oh, well, that's they say hello. Excuse. All right, so we'll take that excuse. Right. Anyway, so as you know, this book built on uh, two prior books, uh, one written by Francis Curran that chronicled the first 50 years of uh, Buckley's history. The next 25 years were documented, chronicled, uh, immortalized by uh, Carol Cantor, who sadly you may know passed away last week. And so we wanted to cover the whole century in the next 25 years. So we called another alumni, a class, another alum class of 1968, Matthew Stevenson, who is a, an author and a book publisher. And we asked him for advice, and he gave us the best advice, I think, by saying, you know, instead of writing about the history of the school, why don't you ask people to contribute essays to, uh, to chronicle uh, the history of the school, which is much, much more interesting because it brings multiple perspectives from different constituent groups, teachers, students, alumni, trustees, heads of school. So uh, it's a really interesting book because you can look at Buckley from multiple perspectives. And so I really, also he's in Switzerland now, so he couldn't be here, but <laughs> we also thank him for, for, uh, for providing us with the, the idea for this book. Uh, and next, uh, before I uh, pass on the not the mic, but the floor to, uh, to Holly. I also wanted to uh, thank Holly uh, O'Brien, who 
essentially masterminded the, the entire centennial celebration last year, which was really, really fantastic. So thank you. <laughs> A lot of work went into it. So should we unveil now and then? Uh, yeah, we'll let's you do it. Okay, yeah, yeah. so who's, who's unveiling? She oh, is. Okay. <laughs> All right, front row. All right, we ready? We yes. Yeah. Yeah.
types of paper, design elements. You can thank her for the velvet touch, matte finish, hard cover that we have. I mean, she gave us a master class in printing. Um, and she lives in Alaska, so if you want to hold that from Alaska, <laughs> we thank her. Um, you know, there, you're going to see a lot of photos in there from the archive, but some of the artifacts and photos were actually sent in from members of the community far and wide, um, and we thank them for sending in their, their memorabilia. And to the, the Scripta class, last year's Scripta class, 2022-2023 Scripta class, they photographed some of the pictures that are, that are in here, which is really sweet to see them um, contributing to that uh, at the, with the help of their teacher, Stephanie Wong. Uh, who was <laughs> so Stephanie Long, our Director of Communications and Development Operations, uh, she also designed this gorgeous book. Um, thank you, Stephanie, for that. Um, and we, we had a, a, a small army of members of the community who helped out. Eric Brunner, thank you so much for taking time out of tax season. <laughs> Tammy Ross, I wanted to say thank you so much for your help with the Centennial Artifacts display. You don't know how much that helped with this project and also just kept me sane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maureen, Maureen Maceo, wonderful. And her extensive records, her institutional knowledge, her gentle touch, her kindness. Thank you so much for all of that. Marjorie John Paul, I, uh, she, uh, so I'm see her here today, but um, so she uh, was our chief community engagement officer. She was, uh, you know, overseeing the centennial. She, we were in meetings, <laughs> our team, we constantly emailed every, every detail, every task, nothing was too small. Um, and then, uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I promise. We're almost done. Um, and yeah, so countless hours with, with Marjorie, Steph, and I, and Dr. Joel, and also countless hours were volunteered by Chrissy McGivney Roliki, class of 1986. She is a copy editor, and she volunteered her time to copy edit this book, um, and we're forever indebted to her, her late mother, Anne McGivney, for getting us connected with her. Um, and then, we, uh, last but not least, we thank the, the authors of the two prior books, Frances Curran, who was a librarian during Buckley's 50th anniversary, and she wrote the 50th anniversary book, The First 50 Years, 1923 to 1973, and our friend Carol Cantor for writing um, the 75th anniversary book, Preserving the Past. Um, and I, I'm just very grateful for this book, too, that we have this uh, this vehicle to be able to pass on uh, uh, the memories of so many of the champions through their stories and photos. Um, and I think I already said last but not least, but I also have to thank Dr. Schuchel for believing in the vision of this project and just guiding so, so much, providing so much guidance and support. Um, and really, whatever the movement called for, if we're feeling like, oh, okay, we need just the just always there guiding us to 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 do our ugly best. <laughs> residence wing would be in full bloom. You drove through the Buckley Bowl around the grassy circle to the front entry, where perhaps girls, where perhaps pairs of girls sat on the edge of a porch playing jacks. <laughs> or perhaps you turned to drive along the left side of the building and parked in the back on thick gravel. You might walk or sled in winter down the long steep hills of the playing fields that surrounded a pond. 
Here, Paramecia could be found for the popular ninth grade class, science class taught by beloved headmaster Cameron Mann. In the years after World War II, Buckley quickly outgrew the facility. Its reputation drew more and more students from across Long Island. In 1956, the school moved. Even the plaques were removed from this, its diminishing wall space to be remounted in Buckley's present Tudor-style building. Ever adapting, this building rests at the heart of the enlarged complex that is Buckley today. To any observer or visitor from past eras, it has simply felt like Buckley, welcoming, smoothly functioning, and open to progress while grounded in its traditions. I find I have been writing about the old Buckley and the new Buckley. No such entities. It has been one Buckley all along. Oh,
a vital part of supporting young people as they work towards figuring out how they to live wholly and authentically. It's something Bhakti does exceptionally well, and I am proud to play a part. future and having all three here <laughs> as present and future I am really uh, my heart is filled with joy and ready to enjoy this whole fair so uh, Holly I think you're going to tell us how, how do people get the book what do we do uh, come see me <laughs> 